talking about simple machines. So today I'm going to talk about forces. So what is a force? I know that many of you heard about forces, but you don't know the exact definition. It's a push or a pull. So you know what a push or a pull is, right? Push or a pull is a push and a pull. So a force can change uh, object speed, direction, and a size. So speed, direction. Speed is like when you throw it hard, it gets faster. Direction, like you can, you can throw it like this, like this, like this. You can do it like all the way. Direction and the size or a shape. Like when you have a paper, when you like crumble it, it gets in a ball, it changes, right? It's like that. So this is a, a lot of force. And first, today I'm gonna start with Newton's law of motion. You've heard of Isaac Newton, right? The guy that got hit by the apple and figured out gravitational force. So I'm gonna talk about his laws. These are laws. The first law would be that an object in motion, you know what motion is, right? I told you yesterday, it's moving. Stay at motion. It means it's just in motion. So it stays in motion. It doesn't like stop. And an object at rest. At rest means like it's not moving. So when you're just sitting in the couch, you don't want to move, right? It's like, just like that. Stay at rest. Also, when you're sleeping, you don't want to wake up. But there's unless. Unless there's another force. Another force means like um, maybe gravitational force, friction force, acting on it. Really long. So I'm gonna tell you what it means. I'm not gonna in motion, stay in motion. As I said, when you kick a ball, you kick a ball, it moves, but in real life it stops because of friction. But in a world without friction, it'll be going forever and ever and ever and ever and ever and ever, and ever infinity. And also, an object at rest, stay at rest. So, okay, for example, I have this marker here. And uh, without touching it or blowing it, can you move this? Do you have supernatural powers? Hi! No, you can't move it, right? So it means an object at rest, stay at rest. Unless, unless there's another force acting on it. So if there's, as I said, when you kick a ball in real life, friction stops it. Also, when it's here, I can use air resistance to blow it or apply force to just hold it up. So another force acting on it. The second would be that, okay, so let's look at my notes. Look at my notes, it's really good. So the second one is that, so the acceleration, acceleration means like the speeding up, like getting more faster of an object, of an object is equal to the force on an object divided by the mass of an object. Okay, really hard words here. So I'm not sure if you can understand it, so I'm gonna just sum it up so that you can understand it. So it means that, um, so more applied force, like the more you push, like you, the more harder you throw this marker, the far it goes, right? The first one means that. And also, um, you have this marker and this whole table. What will be harder to move? This table, right? So uh, in order to move this table, you cannot just do this, you have to do this in order to move it. So that means like that. I hope you understand it. I'm not sure if you understand it, but I hope. So the third one would be that forces 
act in pairs. You've been paired, right? Like when you go on a trip, act in pair. So N means like an action reaction. Oops, action reaction. So action reaction means like, okay, so action means like when you hit a wall, I have this, oh, can you come here? So I have this wall. When I get like this, ow, it hurts. When you hit it hard, the more like force it comes back, so it hurts. Now it really hurts. When you do just this, hurt, it doesn't hurt at all because I hit it hard, like not hurt, softly. So the soft thing came back. So nothing did it hurt. So that's action reaction. Yeah, it hurts so much. Now I'm gonna go into forces separately. First, you'll get a gravitational force. It's really long. You're gonna memorize all of them. Kidding. So here, gravitational force, or I will just write gravity, for short. I think Newton discovered it, so, okay. So, gravitational force, uh, the, like, the most thing that you remember is mass, like the heavy thing, you think, everything has mass. So, uh, when you think about gravitational force, like gravity, you think about this, but it's not only this. When I'm standing like this, there's a gravitational force acting on me too, one g-force. So what I want to say is that all objects, like all things, that has mass, so like a animal, pen, notebook, this, desk, phone, my mom, everyone, they all have mass, right? So they, all objects that have mass, they have gravitational force. Gravity acting on them. Oops, acting on them. So that's what that basically means. And uh, so I will ask you, how strong is gravity? How strong is it? Stronger than anywhere in the world? No, it depends on anything. So if I drop this marker, the gravitational force would be light because this is kind of light. Easy, right? But if I drop this, the gravitational force would be really strong. I'm not gonna do it because it's gonna get broken by gravitational force. So it means like, like the, like the heavier, the heavier the mass is, the mass is the more gravitational force. The more gravity. Gravity is better. Okay? Also, it depends on like how high is it. I can do like this and just easy. If I do it like this, more gravitational. You saw it? It got faster. So, my mom. The higher it is, is the more gravitational force the more gravity so this is pretty much it of gravity and i'm going to give you a few examples so think about sun this is a sun it's not a face a sun this is a sun and sun is like you know the sun is huge right it's so much mass much mass really powerful so that it takes all the planets all the planets in the like the solar system or i don't know like all of them and then they orbit around them because of gravitational force the more I mass it has like the heavier the mass the more the gravity so it has so much gravity that holds on to all the planets so that they can orbit around the sun got it now this time we're gonna move on to friction I raise it, man. Why part is too small? So and remember, that gravitational force acts on so many things everywhere on the planet, even in space. It also acts in the sun, as I said. So friction. Friction is also very long. It's really important. So as this said, 
And they say when you kick a ball, it like stops. That's what I want to say here. Friction stops. Slow down things. So like as I said, it can stop or slow down. So that's because of friction. Also, let me take a look. Okay. So if you have this kind of notebook, you have to you try to slide it on the table, it'll go well. Oh wait, I think I can do it with my hand. If you do this, it's better on the first time, but it gets slower and slower and it stops. This is because of friction. This is a really nice example. Try this. I'll try this to do it. This, oh, no, no, this part about the problem. No, don't try this. Just try it with your hands. So, a friction is like the up opposing movement. Opposing movement. So, what do you think when you hear the word opposing? Opposing means like opposite. You know what opposite means? Opposite means like other, like the other thing. So if there's like a man and an S, the opposite of a S would be an N. So like that. So it's the opposing for, and okay. So there's an example, a skateboard. It looks like a sausage, but it's actually a skateboard. So when you're on a skateboard, you have like a sidewalk and you're going through the walk, right? There it's a little bumpy here that it makes it slow down. And also in the wheels, it's a little bit bumps, like they're called bearing, so that you can slow down or just stop. So this makes friction. It slows down or stops some object. So there's friction, other type of friction, with air. The friction with air. It's on the gravitational force. When I'm dropping this, Gravitational force is like pushing it, like pulling it down, and the uh, friction on the air trying to pull it up because it, it's going this way and stop. Gravitational force is go down, air resistance stop, air resistance is too weak, it just falls down. But it's still there. So with air, it means air resistance. It's the technical world. Air resistance. Very important. It's like a parachute. When you don't have a parachute, you'll die when you're doing skydiving. So here, air resistance. So, uh, okay. So when you drop like a feather or a paper, what's that example? This is heavy for a paper, but it's still kind of like a paper. So when you drop a paper, it like goes like this, 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 and like this, right? This is because gravitation, like uh, not gravitational force. Yes, gravitational force, but also air resistance, like blocking it down. So this is like blocking it by how? Because um, the friction said it's an opposing movement. So said opposing movement. The gravitational force is like pulling it down, right? So it's like an opposite downward movement. Oops, not a good marker. Red pen. Oh, nice marker. Opposite downward. So it means like just up because it's against the gravitation. It's opposite of gravitational force, so it means upward because gravitation means downward. It's how it is. And oh, I didn't explain one thing about friction. The friction is that um, if you have a sandpaper, you know, like the rough ones and just a paper, which one's better to slide? Of course, just paper. It's smoother. So it means that the rougher the area, like the rougher the, like the, object is the more friction it has and the smoother it is it's like the less friction but on the other hand we can like um grease the objects like for example it's in our body on your knee there's a fluid like a water kind of liquid in our knees so that we can reduce friction so you know when the when the uh, soccer players are like um, doing winning ceremony they do this and they slide and that's because of the friction and the fluid inside here. That's pretty much about friction. And the next one would be a static friction. Static friction. Static 
fortune is a type of fortune, but different, kind of different. But yesterday we were doing of a lever, first class, second class, and third class is similar to that, static friction. So first static friction is like no motion. Not no motion. Okay, so it's no motion. It's not moving. It's like this. So like there could be some force that is pushing it, like pulling it there, but static force, like static friction is blocking it. So it's a balanced. It's like balanced. Balanced, it doesn't move. Okay, I will draw something. So there, here's this guy. Cool guy. This guy. I'm not sure if I have some, but he's a cool guy. So he's here. There's his backpack. He left his backpack here. Okay, his backpack is pretty big. So if there's like a um, okay, force going this way, okay, no, to the opposite way. If the force is going this way, the static friction is going this way. This is the static friction. I'll just write static for short. It's just some kind of force. So when the force is pushing it like that way, static friction is blocking this way, so it doesn't move. No motion, this guy, and not touching anything. No touches. Not touching anything. No touches. Means don't touch it. I'm gonna do this part. Hold a minute. Oops, my marker, I'll hook it up. Okay, so from here. I will have sliding friction. Do you know what sliding friction means? As it just said, it's sliding. So I'll also have a drawing here. It's like a sliding motion. Sliding motion, you know what sliding is, right? It's probably like this. This is sliding. It's a sliding motion. So this is what it is, and so this guy now is trying to move this kind of desk or something. I know his backpack. I'm gonna push it, like sliding it. Oh, his backpack is too heavy, right? He has to slide it down like this. So the force is going this way because he's pushing it. Force is going this way. Oops. Force. And the sliding friction is blocking this way. Friction, as I said, is just the opposite. Force, opposite. Friction here, no way. They cannot happen. Okay? Opposite. All the time. This is sliding friction. So uh, it means that static friction is still like, stronger than sliding friction. Because it doesn't move here, but it does move here. So sliding friction is a little weaker. So I put sliding for it, like sliding as SLI and static for STA. STA is stronger than SLI. Okay? Now here I got rolling. Rolling friction. Okay, not you rolling like, uh, not you rolling like this, but rolling friction like wheels, you know? So it's rolling motion. Okay, for example, rolling motion, you know, like carrier, when you're going on a trip, you bring like a like a, a bag with wheels, four wheels on it, so that you can drag it like this. That's a really good example. So this guy here, very cool guy. And the same guy. Oh, and I'll draw the opposite. Come here. So this guy going this way. Very happy that it's so light, right? Because it's so light. Let's go. We got this. We got his backpack on wheels. So this part would be the rolling friction. It's like it's stopping it to roll, but the force that is dragging this force is much stronger than rolling friction. Rolling, I'll put L uh, R O L. Like this R O L is even like weaker.
better than sliding. You know, try sliding like a bag, like a carrier, and then try rolling it. What's easier? You don't have to try it, you know this. Sliding is much harder than rolling. So this would be the, what is the first, second, and third? St uh, static first, sliding second, rolling, and it's the third. I think rolling is the best one for us because, you know, we have to move things a lot. So at construction work, like when they're working, with no wheels, they cannot work. No one can ever work there. They'll die. Because it's too hard. Next would be another force. So get ready. Remember friction because friction is really important and it's gonna come out all the time. Oh, too many things to raise. Red marker stain on the board. Not cool. Okay, so there. This time, the magnetic force. I'm just gonna use blue, this bad. Magnetic force. Magnetic force. So, you tried to play with magnets before, right? When you have magnets, you have like N, S. N and N, like they are like repel. So there's this magnet together. This let's say this N S N S. They hate each other. Hate. They're like saying like go away. Yeah. They're like this. They hate each other. N N S S. They're like it's cold. Repel. Repel means they hate each other. And if there's another piece of magnet, it says S here and here, this time here. Oh, we should stick them together. Because here, it's they finally meet their pairs. So I said forces act in pairs. This is what it means. And then, see, they love each other. And these two also love each other, but they're a little bit apart because of these two. Anyway, they love each other. They never want to stick back. When, even though when you use the force to let it go, when you don't get it far away, when you get it like this, this when you let it go, it just sticks together. This is because it's non-contact force. You're not touching it, but it just gets together. Magnetic force is kind of short because it's just repel and attract because you know, you try doing it a lot, right? Oh, as I said, those sticking together is a trap. I'm sorry. Those sticking together, a trap is like, they love each other, like I said, a trap. And then this, they love each other. Okay? Then a trap, this is a repel. A trap and repel. You should remember these two because these two are good words that you will need to remember when you're learning about magnetic force. Those are the, the key words. Second, electrostatic force. So this is really long, electrostatic force. Okay, this was the longest title that I ever wrote like yesterday and today. So electrostatic force is a non-contact force, as I said, non-contact. So an example would be like a balloon. Balloon. This guy, uh, hair like this. Uh, as you see, as you see, he only has three hair, and this is about to fall out. Like, like oh man, because it's about to fall out. This is because of electrostatic force. So rubbing, when rubbing, like rubbing, like when you're using the balloon, you rub it, right? When rubbing with the electrostatic force in the balloon, it's transferred to his hair, like to his three hair. So it means that there is like a law of energy. Law of energy. And this is like energy, right? Or it could be force. Force can't be built 
or destroy you can say made 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 or destroyed but can be transferred transferred means that you can move it so the balloon transferred like moved the electrostatic force to his hair and he's about to cry so this is about the electrostatic force um the like the um, part that says transferred gets transferred is called charge charge okay so this would be all okay everybody two left i know it's a little bit boring just stay right there two only left okay don't sleep only two left listen there is Buoyancy. Okay, buoyancy is like floating on the water. Okay, there's like a rubber duck. Uh, I don't know, this rubber duck is pretty bad. I'm gonna pick this. Cool. Okay, let's see this is a rubber duck. Bad rubber duck. This is also bad. I'm just gonna draw it again here. There's like this. Let's see this is a rubber duck. You know, when you're playing on the tube, you have this rubber duck. Rubber duck. Buoyancy makes things float. Things float in water. Okay, everybody. This is not blood. I don't have blue, so I draw like this. Not blood, it's water. Things float in water. Float. Things float in water. Yay. Oh, better just stay on the water. Things float in water like this rubber duck. And it is also connected with the, uh, air resistance. As I said, in air resistance, we have surface area. Like the big surface area, more likely to fall down like uh, like a long, like longer. So it's better. Because parachutes are big, so they can fall down slowly so that they don't die. I told you this, right? Also, here, surface area is also important. Surface area. Surface area means like how big the area of the thing is, as I said, the parachute. So I have a ball. Okay, let me see. This is just a ball. This is a boat, which has a bigger surface area. You don't know? This, of course, the boat. Can you see this? this whole part, this is the surface area, right? So this is the bigger, so this is better to float than this. This probably sink. This sink, this float. Also like, um, there's like a history in Korean with Japan war. Korean's boat was like this, and Japan's boat was like this. This, pointy. So it's more likely to get sink, but the Korean ones are just fine because it's flat. It's good. That will be all for buoyancy and the last one. Everybody, last one. Okay, hold on there. Last one. Let's go. Oh, sorry. Last one. Okay, I'm gonna do it fast so that you don't get bored. Come on, stay on there. I'm coming. Okay, come here. Tension. Tension force. Now you probably know what is tension force. If you don't, I'll tell you right here. Tension force is like a force applied on a string. Okay. You know what a string is, right? That string. So it's like this string. Let's say it's tied on the string. If there's like a rock here, it's a pendulum. Pendulum is also a simple machine, but I didn't explain it yesterday because I will. This has so much thing to do with tension force. This is like, like almost they're just the same. They're really similar. Okay. Okay, I'm gonna finish this. So tension force. This this can be a this is a pull. The pull, never a push. See, gravitational force is pulling it down, but it's pulling it up. 
pulling it up. It never pushes it up, down. Or you never say it pushes up, right? So, like this, it's never a push, it's always a pull. Okay? So, now it's the end of the lesson, okay? Thank you for listening. I know I've been bored. I'm sorry. But next time I'll talk to you about what simple machines, like in simple machines, what forces are there? Let's say like gravitational force, tension force here, everywhere. Like that, okay? Bye bye!